Hey there, welcome to the Infinite Regression. It's a uh, it's weekend. Wait, hold up. I had to start the presentation first, otherwise it would be ridiculous. It would look like a rank amateur. That's an amateur who doesn't shower on the frequent. And makes jokes like this one about what a rank amateur is. God, I'm a professional. A greased up, greased up, lubed, heavily lubricated professional. No, like the whole body. So I can, you know, I'm a professional. Anyway, so uh, this is Weekend Type Fun Volume 4. Hold up. Cha! Mm, that's the backup music. That's the only music you're going to hear this time. You, you came here for the music? What is wrong with you? Look, this is not for the faint of Ronsky. Do you get that reference? You don't. Is it because you're a dingus? Who doesn't pay attention to important things? My God, you don't know what a Ronsky faint is? Like, oh man. We are not friends. You don't get that reference. We're not friends. Okay. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Moving on. Conundrum number one. I need to know the answer to this. There's just reasons. No reason. Don't get your... Definitely appropriate for your gender underwear in a twist. Anyway. Conundrum number one. Wait, hold up. I have to do it correctly. Uh, conundrum number one. I've been doing that for weeks. Like, I have to do it in the right voice. Anyway. Is belittling your underdogs. Underdogs. Underlings. I remember that show. Underlings. Underlings. Anyway. Facing other things asunder is something of a wonder. Underlings. Whoa, 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 wonderlings. I definitely don't have that theme song correct. <laughs> like, I did see that show as a child, but I 100% do not remember the theme song. Anyway, get to the... Get, shh, shh. Everybody shut up. Everybody in this room. You. Chaz. Yeah, it's a room full of white people. That one over there, his name is Chaz. And he won't shut the frick up. Shut it up, Chaz. Yeah, you too, Aiden. Look, look, I know that a few years ago, parents were like, Hey, let's just have Aiden at the end of every white freaking kid's name. And you get your Jaden and your Caden and your Hayden and your, uh, not Maiden. That's a girl name. Uh, let's see. Braden and, uh, Layden and Gaden and, uh, uh, oh my God, it was ridiculous. And then, then along came the douchiest parents ever like freaking rowing that douche canoe like just paddles in the water freaking the water smell like ammonia and whatnot and here they come and just name their kid Aiden just plain old Aiden Aiden you shut the frick up I didn't even invite you I'm in a room full of white people Anyway, I hope they don't freaking talk out of turn. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, Jackson. Oh my God, your parents like combined two half names. Who gives a crap? Go hang out with your friend, Kason. Oh, I swear to God, Kason. It's like your parents almost gave you a normal name. And then they were like, nope, we want to be from Utah. And then they named you Kason. What the frick? 
Like, please, for the love of God, just go back to South Jordan where you belong. (laughs) I don't know anything about South Jordan. It might is it bougie there? Sounds bougie. Hella bougie. Is that the bougie part of Utah? Hold up, hold up. I'm gonna ask Siri. Ahem. Hey Siri, is South Jordan the bougie part of Utah? I found this on the web. Oh my god, she said it is. <laughs> Okay, all right. Conundrum number one is belittling your underlings. Conunderlings? Cunnilingus? No, underlings. Is that a sport? On the one hand, number one, they, they friggin' deserve it. Let's not act like they don't. Have you seen them? Have you seen... Have you? Number two. It helps you forget about your Napoleon complex, which, yes, oh my God, we understand. The actual Napoleon didn't have. You think you're so freaking smart just because you learned one historical fact. Well, how's about I teach you a historical... About the historical losses at the Battle of My Open Palm and your friggin' head. Your friggin' head... My open palm, slap, that's the sound of my open palm and your friggin' big coconut of a head. Swear to God, I'll put you in your friggin' place. Oh, I'll belittle you, you underling. Okay, this all this little act out leads credence to the belief that it is perhaps a sport. Uh, number three. It relieves all that sexual tension. Oh, God. Uh, Right? Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, You can't buy apology donuts for the whole team if you have nothing to apologize for. I mean, right? That was the last one. I mean, totally. (laughs) Yeah. Hey. All you white people, you shut the frick up. I gave you white wine. I gave you white wine even though it is not the best kind. It's just the kind that you drink when you think that it's not going to smell as bad and that people won't notice that you're freaking drunk at your son's soccer game. You stupid, stupid, silly, silly, contemptuous woman. I'm looking at you, Clarissa. Oh, anyway, the freaking Clarissa. She's a piece of work. (sighs) Her and Kaysen. Anyway, I don't need it. Anyway, take their white wine and go back to South Jordan, Utah, where wine is probably illegal. What's that? They can have wine, they just can't see it being poured. Because apparently that leads to drinking. (laughs) What? You can't be serious. Okay. On the other hand, once your main hand gets sore, you can beat them with the other hand. You know, like in a joke that was written by a person who didn't know what the hell they were doing. You are on thin ice. You. No, I hope that when I swivel my head, that it comes out the other side of the headphones. Yes, they're watching it with headphones. Have you met the people who watch YouTube? There's no way they're playing it over a set of speakers. It's headphones! Either that or they're playing it over the phone speaker and it sounds like trash. It's all like... They can't even hear it. They turn on the closed captioning, which was written by an algorithm that's doing its best. You think it could interpret those mumbles? If it said something racist in those mumbles, that was not... I didn't know. No. No. 
Hey, YouTube algorithm, no. Okay. Ah, uh, the solution. Yes, tis sport. Slap them twice for questioning you in front of the help. And threaten to tell father. Oh, if father hears about this, hmm. Now, don't you forget it, you piece of human refuse. Uh, conundrum number two. Mustache equals sign gay question mark? Oh, this is that picture for the Giants. Justin Timberlake. Verlander Timberspoon. Benedict Verlanderson. Oh, now I've really messed with... Wait, what is his name? Justin Verlander? Is that Justin Verlander? Is that Verlander? Mustache equals you are this gay. Yeah. You might as well be from what's that country next to Paraguay? Oh, you are gay? Yeah, that one. Okay, conundrum number two. Uh, the same question, mustache equals gay. Oh, this one. This one, if it's not gay, it's not gay. It's not gay. It doesn't equal it's not gay. So therefore, it's not. The thing that you think it is. It's not. Anyway, uh, yep. Okay. Hipster douchebag came here on a freshly brewed, uh, artisanally made, handcrafted, penny farthing pair of suspenders that he was into way before you were with his little curly cues. If you look at the ends of those curly cues, it's like spittle from other men. That mustache was straight, and he he gay-kissed other men who got their saliva on the ends of that mustache, which curled it thusly, making it extra gay because men's tongues made it so. I mean, on the one side, it was because the guy was licking his mustache, which is a very gay thing to do, because there's no straight woman that would ever lick a man's mustache. Not even, not even, and no, not even his. He might come up later in a different slide. Anyway, and the other one, the other one, somebody just, like, he went to his proctologist and, and got the uh, the old prostate exam, and his the other side of the mustache just curled up on its own. That one curled first, and then he was like, hmm, maybe kissing boys, and then he did. But guess what? He was into kissing boys before you were, so what are you so gay about? Anyway, uh, continuing on our quest for truth. Mustache equal gay. Cesar Romero famously would not uh, shave his mustache in order to play the Joker, who is the most fabulously gay of all the Batman. I mean, you think uh, the the quilty one, what's his name? The confusing quilt, the patchwork quiltman, the, the quilt master. I know that all the Batman nerds are shouting at their screens right now. It's confusing quilt. <laughs> oh my God. It's Captain Patchwork, you stupid. Anyway, uh, yeah, the crazy quilt. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah, Joker is the most fantastically gay of all the Batman villains, and that includes a man who wears a jumpsuit with question marks on it. Um, <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like, this guy, gayer than that. And um, the fact that he wouldn't shave his mustache to play this gay icon of a role, this like share before share was share of a role, that's the gayest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Uh, you all knew that. I just wasted a part of your life because you were like, I know he wouldn't shave his mustache. You weren't around in 66. Neither was I. 
But like somehow we all have been like, I know this one fact about this old show that was on before I was born. Anyway, oh my God. I don't even know what this guy's name is, but like he was in the Navy. You can sail the seven seas in the Navy. Ivan et Niaj. Ivan et Niaj. Yeah, <laughs> so gay, so gay. Also, if I find out you joined the Navy because of this slide, then this is also for you. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> He's getting it curly cued. Uh, okay, guys, guys, men who are watching this later, doesn't this make you want to kiss guys? I mean, just does, doesn't that like a sexy ad for guy kissing? Because being gay is a choice, and like, this is making you think about choosing it, right? <laughs> right? I mean, like, look how moist that tongue is. It's like... Oh my god, you want to put your tongue on that tongue. You want to lick it like a postage stamp. <sighs> they used to lick postage stamps. They didn't always be self-adhesive. You can lick the self-adhesive ones, but it ruins the adhesive and is also not pleasant on the tongue. They used to be mint-flavored, by the way. Stamps. True. True story. Ask your parents, assuming they're not gay. Because they were licking other things. Men's faces. Men's faces. Get your mind out of the gutter. Anyway, moving on. Uh, oh my God. Okay. If you bought some low rent, freaking cheap, basically Walmart quality, not even from a decent Halloween store that used to be something else that capitalism decided was no longer worth our time or interest, the, the, yeah, that like the store went out of business in August and then come October, what's in there? Halloween store. It's not even that level of quality. And then you take that mustache and this made of like friggin' crepe paper suit and uh, you take it to Halloween and you're wearing this uh, up and down a street where girls are playing like slutty versions of things that shouldn't have slutty versions, you know? It's like, ooh, I'm a slutty flying spaghetti monster. And it's like, what? That, uh, I don't know which part is more offensive to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then one comes up and it's like, Ugh, I'm the slutty David Bowie. And it's like, no, he was the one. I mean, anyway, <laughs> I love David. I miss you, David Bowie. <laughs> like, I do. I miss him so much. I miss him all the time. Does that make me gay? Am I gay now? Because I miss David Bowie a lot in the middle of me talking about mustaches making me gay. I don't have a mustache, I have a full beard, and part of it is made of mustache, but most of it is not, if we're being honest. Does that make me gay? Or does, is, is it the romantic attractions to, to men when I myself am apparently a man, does that make me gay? Anyway... Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, mustache equals gay, this mustache, these freaking dimples, this jawline, and these beautiful eyes, vintage Selleck, yes, please, also, this is my most recent photo, this is, in fact, the most recent picture of me in existence, even though it was taken in 20, two, th ooh, 20, no, back then we were just like, it'll always be 2000 and 2006, 2021. Like, oh my God, we thought it was just going to be that we would be saying 2021. What year is it? It's 2021. That didn't turn out. That didn't turn out at all. 
Let's let's go back one. Okay. Mustache equals gay. Vintage Selleck, yes, please. This is, in fact, the most recent picture of me in existence, even though it was taken in 2016. I think I got it. Uh, a newish list. The top several No Man's Sky weapons that sound like euphemistic forbidden sexual practices of the 1800s. Number 10, the blaze javelin, <laughs> right? Number nine, the pulse splitter. <laughs> that, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> like, do whatever you want to me, just don't do the pulse splitter. I'm not French. We don't practice it in school. <laughs> Number eight, the bolt caster. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, coming out of this corner, he's bringing a strong bolt caster. <laughs> Wrestling ain't what it used to be, John. No, it's not, Gary. Uh, as a matter of fact, this makes me want to wrestle you. <laughs> oh, that's a weird thing you said there. Uh, I don't remember the other voice. I hope that was a reasonable approximation. <laughs> I did like a two-character five second act out and immediately forgot what one of them sounds like acting did i say bolt caster <laughs> did i <laughs> it's weekend type fun no reason <clears throat> no you are okay top several no man's sky weapons that sound like euphemistic forbidden sexual practices of the 1800s the plasma launcher. That's how, it's, how it ends, anyway. I'm telling you. Uh, number six, the geology cannon. Uh, for when you want to go down in the dirt. <laughs> See, I didn't think this one sounded as filthy as the others, so I went and explained it, and in so doing, have ruined what scant bit of hilarity might have been gleaned from this name. And then I didn't close the parenthesis. Oh, I hate it when I make freaking typos. God. Okay. Uh, and we're back to normal. I definitely paused it there so you wouldn't see my meltdown. George Q. Cannon. For when you want to get down in the dirty McGurdy. See, I didn't think this one sounded as filthy as the others, so I went and explained it, and in so doing have ruined what scant bit of hilarity might have been gleaned from this name. Oh, that's, there's no way you can make this funny. It's a failed bit. Let's just give up on it soon, hopefully. Uh, number five, phase beam. Number four, tickly cat shins. This isn't a No Man's Sky weapon. There's just a cat tickling my shins with her long, fluffy tail fur. This was hours ago, and it's not funny anymore. It was barely funny then. Cyclotron Ballista. I can't sell these if they're not any good. I can't. Look. Okay. Braxton. Braxton, I'm telling you, look, in this room full of white people, so many freaking white people in this room, Braxton, look, telling you specifically, we all sat down, look, I would tell you the truth, I'm the talent, I don't really pay attention in the writing sessions, I assume that you, as head writer, would take care of it. So I wouldn't be up here looking like a freaking idiot with more of these bad lists. Forbidden sexual practices of the 1800s. Look, I'm telling you, if you give me one more of these, uh, I don't know if I'm going to renew my contract. Like, then where are you going to be? You'll be out on the freaking street. If I don't renew, there is no show. If there is no show, then how would you be head writer on a show that doesn't freaking exist, Braxton? Look, just be professional. That's all I'm asking for. God. You know what? If you freaking post this, 
as part of one of those, oh, my big boss melted down like an idiot. You post this on the internet, you're freaking done. You hear me, Braxton? Uh, um, where were we? Oh, number three, Cyclotron Ballista. <laughs> that, I mean, that one gets me, you guys. You guys. Hey, hey, look, there's my head writer, Braxton. He wrote that one. Hey, wave at the camera, Braxton. <laughs> He's never been on camera before. Uh, uh, number two, I'm bored. Let's go do something else. Looking at you, Braxton. Yeah, that's right. We're doing something else. Oh, the audience might be reading ahead even though I'm talking. They're not listening to what I'm saying. They're reading the slide even though I'm providing audio. They don't have to read. I'm a voice that it reads for them. <sighs> well, look who paid attention in school. All right. Isn't it crazy that English adjectives have to be listed in specific or I did not know that it was going to be this slide. And so as an English educator, like I'm very excited about this concept. Like I, this is, oh my God, I wish me and Corey Stamper, <clears throat> sorry, I wish Corey Stamper and I <laughs> could freaking like just have some weekend type fun and then just line you all up in in terms of adjective order just tell you how adjectives work like this and this is true if you are a native english speaker this will make perfect sense to you because um we really do there is an acceptable order of adjectives and you can't put one before the other so um, the order is number, opinion, size, shape, age, color, origin, particularly national origins like French, German, whatever. Material, purpose, you know, and and that's it. Or NASA comp, if you like initialisms. So, look, you could have several bad blue... Uh, kitchen shears, you know, several bad blue kitchen shears, right? But you couldn't have set, you couldn't have blue several uh, bad kitchen shears. Uh, I'm trying to mix it up and I'm not doing a very good job. I, I actually do have um, better, uh, examples of this written. If you want to see them, they're on the following slides. Uh, but yeah, like our brains really actually work this way. And so if you hear these adjectives describing a noun, they have to be in this order. And if they're not in this order, they sound incorrect. And your brain does this automatically. If you're a native English speaker, it's weird, but this is actually true. So uh, several large sports poorly made rubber Phoenician old oblong green dill doesn't sound right, but several poorly made large oblong old green Phoenician rubber sports dildos, right? Right? I mean, according to the rules of English... This, <laughs> the bottom one. Uh, I might need a water break at some point. Mm -hmm. Oh, on the following slides, I shall be busting the fattest of rhymes. Okay, I actually do need to get water then. Hold up, where is, where is Zerbias Studio? Hi, OBS Studio. I'm going to pause you. Okay, I'm back. It feels like I have something stuck in my throat, but we're going to go for it anyway. Anyway. Uh, um, on the following slides, I shall be busting the fattest of rhymes. I'll be talking about this one rhymes with that one. I'd be like, this one rhymes with that one. Wait, is that the guy who plays Nardle on Doctor Who? 
It's got the same head shape. I talk about this one and that one. I talk about them same two ones, but in like underwears, bikinis. I don't know. I, they look like they're going to the beach, but they're body positive. Okay, I'm not going to lie. When I wrote that slide, I had fallen down a bit of a rabbit hole googling fat twins. And also, there were way fewer <clears throat> adult type images than you'd think. I mean, you think you Google like fat twins and the first 27 things you'd find would Google would be like, did you mean, cause that's definitely somebody's kink. Like, I don't know. It's weird. This world is full of weird people into weird things. Wait, am I recording? I just need to please for the love of God. Am I recording? <laughs> cause good. I don't want to have to redo this part. Ugh. Anyway, there were zero, I found zero adult type images with searching for fat twins. And that's literally what it's, I just put it to Google, like, give me fat twins. And Google was like, here they are fully clothed every time. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> I don't know what I expected, but I did not expect that. <laughs> like. Google, I've been around you for a while, and I'm not going to lie, the number of times that I've been like, innocuous phrase, and you'd be like, did you mean pornography? And I'd be like, no, I didn't, Google. I'm at work right now, and I'm just trying to find out what the weather is in Parker. Anyway, I'm in a Parker state of mind. <laughs> Oh, the, I, I, there's no way that students should watch this one. I swear to God, this is a bad idea. Uh, hey, Mrs. Badger, if you're watching this, it's fine. None of my students watch this. I swear to God, if you watch this, I'd be so mad. Uh, okay, note to self, don't get sidetracked. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, I don't even know. Uh, why was this one of the eight images that came up when I Google image searches, searches, searched? Oh, I hate it when I make typos. God. Ooh. And you'll see what I mean when I talk about God here in a minute. You'll find out I will teach you about the Lord Anyway, okay, why was this one of only eight images that came up when I Google image searched? What was I talking about? Talk to me, boy. Boy, talk to me. <laughs> what? So seriously, what was I just about to say? I don't even know. I'm distracting myself from getting distracted by myself. Oh, right. Oh, okay. I was going to talk about Nickelback. I remember this. Uh, okay. I don't think that people hate Nickelback because their music is bad, because it's not really that bad. It's not. Like, if you listen to it, you wouldn't be like, Oh, this is as bad as the Holocaust. Or like, oh, this is as bad as man's inhumanity towards man as evidenced over several centuries of recorded history. Um, yeah, you, you wouldn't say it's as bad as that because that's like, by definition, the worst that we can do. Uh, they can write songs and play instruments and sing and stuff. Like it's they don't. It's not like they don't have any talent, and, and it's not like it's objectively bad. Like it conforms to the songwriting structures and the songwriting instrumentation of popular music uh, over a period of like, I mean, God, ever since it started to become. Um, a unified idea that you know popular music from like say the 1950s to the 1990s really uh was mostly proliferated by people with guitar bass and drums and vocals honestly and uh they fall within that realm so 
Uh, and are they bad at playing guitar and drums and bass and singing? No, objectively they are not. Um, but here's why. The real reason is that their music is completely unremarkable. Like, I've heard a dozen of their songs, and I couldn't, I could not hum a single one of you, one of you, one of you, one of them, for you right now. The only one that I can think of is the one, look at this photograph. And that's as much of that song as I remember. I'm not even joking. It's like, look at this photograph. I don't even know what the rhyme on photograph is. I don't know how any of the rest of that song goes. And it's probably their most famous song. And so, like, you take that into consideration. You're like, I couldn't hum a note of this freaking band. And they have songs that are popular that have sold a lot of freaking copies that people have listened to a lot. And meanwhile, like, I can't hum any of it. And, and given that fact, it doesn't seem that they should be famous given how lukewarm their music is. And because it is lukewarm, I, I spew it out of my mouth. That comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 16. Look it up. Go, go get your Bible right now. I'm not even joking. Go get your Bible. God said no Nickelback. In, it's in the Bible. Uh, and and also, by the way, this is why I don't get BTS and people's obsession with BTS. And like, how is it okay that they wear this much makeup? I don't like this much makeup on girls. And these are allegedly boys. Like, even if they were gay, and I don't think they are because they have a fan base of primarily teenage girls, and teenage girls don't tend to go for the gay stuff. That's more like, I don't know, I would be into it, <laughs> like, because all the bands that I was into in high school, totally gay. Pet Shop Boys, Erasure, <laughs> Depeche Mode, like, so gay. Uh, yeah. So, like, they are. They're like gay icons and stuff. And, uh, oh, in a different video, I was like the gayest thing I've ever seen. I've seen Pet Shop Boys in concert, and it was the gayest thing I've ever seen. I may have been the only straight man in, like, a 20-mile radius at that point. The emanation of gay power was so strong coming out of a Pet Shop Boys concert that, like... All other heteros were moved in a radius of 20 miles. They could not penetrate. It was an impenetrable sphere of, of gayness. But I was on the inside. I was in the epicenter. I was in the eye of the hurricane of gayness. And I saw things. And it was wonderful. Like, party with the gays. They know what they're doing. Anyway, like, if you're the last homophobe on earth, like, for reals, though, like, gay dudes know how to party, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, and so, like, yeah, if these gentlemen are gay, like, it's fine, I don't care about that, they wear a lot of makeup, even for gays, though, like, and the problem is, like, the image is somewhat baffling to me, but, like, whatever. Like, I am, uh, <coughs> I don't edit. I never edit my stuff. Anyway, um, like, I know I'm old and old-fashioned, but, like, um, I, yeah, I just don't get their look. I don't get it. Wait, is this one wearing a bolo tie? That's the official state neckwear of Arizona. It's true. Uh, yeah, they're wearing bolo ties. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not going to say what I think about bolo ties, especially since it's the state neckwear of my state. Look it up, Arizonans. It's true. We have an official state wear neckwear. It's the bolo tie. And don't think that like Texans and New Mexicans and stuff are like, oh, son of a Arizona. We had that. That was going next in the draft. Oh, you guys got so lucky in that lottery. <laughs> like, oh, we were going to take that as our official state neckwear. What do we got now? Ascots? Ascots and bow ties. Oh, that'd be great. We're Texas. We wear ascots. Like, ugh. Uh, by the way, I've been to Texas. Friggin' ascots as far as the eye can see. Anyway. Regardless, I, I think Fred from uh, Scooby-Doo is from Texas. Because if he's not, there is no explanation. Anyway, all right. Uh, so, yeah, like, I remember BTS came to America and they played in the Ed Sullivan Theater, which uh, now is home to Stephen Colbert who is a comic genius and I need him in my life for my sanity and have like, I would not have made it through the Trump years without Stephen Colbert. Thank you, sir, for your service. Um, anyway, so they came to the Ed Sullivan theater, which is where the Beatles played when they first came to America. And that's where BTS played when they first came to America. And there were so many um, comparisons being made. And I was like, okay, all right. I'll, I'll hear what it is. I'll hear what they're bringing. And I listened to it and I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> I was like, like, even in the moment, I was trying to like it. I was like, oh, the freaking, this is the new thing. And I didn't expect them to sound like the Beatles. Like, it wasn't that. And I didn't expect them to um, have the gravitas of, like, late-era Beatles when they're obviously not that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they haven't established their legend as much. I mean, un unless you're a tweenage girl. but and, and then their legend is strong. And how dare you? And I hope none of them see this video because they'll be very upset. And my comment section will be on fire. Uh -huh. From the burning of the anger of the tweenage girl. But, like, I don't freaking get it. I don't get it. Like, I have listened to it so many times. I even played it for my wife. I'm like, this is what's hot right now. Like, this is it. This is what, like... Because we were talking about our kids and popular music or something. Anyway, our kids don't listen to this. Our kids listen to, like, the freaking Undertale soundtrack a million times. They're... And they're like, ooh, let's listen to Metroidvania one more time. I know it's not called Metroidvania. Anyway, regardless, but I've listened to a ton of BTS songs. I've been, I've tried, I've tried, cause like everybody's like, oh yeah, it's just pure joy and happiness. Like that's what K-pop brings, and that's what it is, and it's so good and just happy and nice and you know straightforward. You know, and I'm looking for good things in my life all the time, and it's and I'm not opposed to something just cause it's new, you know, but like. I didn't get it. It doesn't move me at all. Like, ugh, what is it? I don't even know. I don't even know what it is. And I don't get it. I don't know. I never will. Too freaking old, too out of it, old man, apparently. Anyway. Oh, but seriously, though, I was about to bust fat rhymes. No messing around. This is my debut as a hip-hop styled musician and I want it to go well. Pre so please, please, ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself to get hipped and uh, please prepare yourself to get hopped as well. There will be both because it's hip-hop time. I think I solved the mystery of the woman's hip. 
Uh, note to self, don't get sidetracked. Wait, is this the second time I've used this? It feels like. If it is, then I am very sidetracked. That's why I have weekend type fun is all of the getting sidetracked. Anyway. Oh, right. Nickelback. Okay. Uh, so the real reason that well, you don't think that I know I did this one before. Okay. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. JK. JK. Get it. Get it. Because here's the joke. Just kidding is what I wish she said after her transphobic tweet. That's not a joke, actually. That's some. I looked into that, and I'm like, you go through all the trouble of being like, Dumbledore is gay, by the way. And it's like, you give no indication that he, well, that's because gay people are just like, I get it that gay people are just like everybody else. But if that was a factor of the character that you needed to tell us, then it would have, like, ugh. Okay. <sighs> intersectionality jk like um he it's not the entire being uh it's not the entire essence of his being his gayness but like if he is gay then it needs to be factored into who he is in an intersectional way that forms the person that is him if we're talking about a character being real and seeming real and giving them real world traits, um, then it should factor in in some way. I don't get it. I don't get the way that you, like, ugh, you're going to go through the trouble to tell us that Dumbledore is gay and then you're going to be transphobic. Why? What the crap goes on in your brain? You weird lady, you made a lot of money. You should use your powers for good. Okay, seriously, now. Now? No, no, that says, okay, seriously now. Oh, fat rhymes, that's right. <laughs> I was talking about fat, fatty, fat, fat rhymes. Okay, the following lyrics were generated using a rap lyric generator. Because I never passed the mission where you have to steal Mad Dog's rhyme book. So, I have to end the slideshow, and I, I do, in order to make the song. And this uh, I'm just going to be perfectly honest with you. The song's already made. When I wrote the slides, I was like, oh, I'll just tell them. I'll just go through them like I do. And I'm like, uh by the time I've gone through these slides, I will have forgotten everything that I was doing in regards to this sweet hip hop song that I want to make. So, um, yeah, did the hip hop song first, finish the slides, finish creating the slides, then went back or then, then recorded the hip hop song, then went back to record this video that you're watching right now which why are you watching it like i told you look my wife doesn't want you to watch it and i don't want to get in trouble so cut it out anyway so i have to end the slideshow to access them but first a top 10 list of Billy Joel songs that sound like euphemistic names for homosexual acts in the 1800s. Number 10, Baby Grand. Number 9, Goodnight Saigon. Oh, yeah, Governor. Morning, if I give you a good night, Saigon, eh? Aye. Good night, Saigon, eh? Take you down to the baby grand, eh? It's popular in Australia. Uh, uh, the Down Easter Alexa. Hey, uh, hey, Roger. You gonna come around? Maybe see the the new boat I picked up? The Down Easter Alexa. You picking up what I'm putting down, Roger? That down. 
Easter. Uh, Alexa. This is the grossest AMR I've ever heard. My apologies to humanity as a whole. I have done you wrong. I will not commit seppuku, but I will apologize. <laughs> Number seven, The Stranger. Number six, Allentown. Hey, you guys, uh, you guys going down to Allentown? You, you mind if a third one comes along? Eh? A third guy coming with you to Allentown, you know what I'm saying? Three guys, Allentown, you know. Bup, up, up, up. Allentown, you know what I'm saying? I'm wearing a handkerchief in my right pocket and walking slowly through the park asking unassuming bachelor-type gentlemen if they would like to accompany me to Allentown, bup, 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 bup. You know what I'm saying. Please. It gets so lonely where I am. Oh my god, that made me sad. That made me sad because, um, that's how, like, it used to be hard for gay people. <sighs> hey, fun fact that not everybody in my family knows. My grandfather was gay. It's true. He died of AIDS in the, uh, like late 1980s early 1990s I'm trying to remember how old I was when he died yeah I think late 1980s like 89 I think it was 89 90 somewhere in there died of AIDS which uh was is a subject of great shame for some in my family Anyway, which is why I never heard about it until I was an adult. And all I had to do to learn that fact was leave the religious community I was raised in. <laughs> Just have my entire belief system torn out by the root and uh, crushed under the heel of uh, the blinding light of fact. Yeah, that wasn't... That wasn't a rough time at all. Hey, you're learning things about me that you didn't otherwise know. Apparently, apparently tonight's comedy will be served up with a side dish of honesty. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that that was number six, Allentown. Bup, 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 bup. It comes with something that may or may not be honest. He may do a little silly voice at the end to deflect from the fact that it was in fact honest. And he wants you to maybe doubt that it was because he's now uncomfortable with you knowing things about him. Number five, famous last words. You got any famous last words? Yeah, I'm going to continue like that whole thing in the middle of Allentown didn't happen. Okay, that's super gay, you weirdo. I'm just a gentleman in a park saying weird words. Code words, just trying to get some, you know what I'm saying, little famous last words, eh? Uh, <clears throat> this is your presentation title. That was funnier to me, but it's only funny to me because this is what the title slide looks like. This is a template that I got from a website that I would say if they wouldn't be 100% not okay with me um, saying that I got ideas from them in any way, given the nature of everything that I've said tonight. Thank you, thank you. This is your presentation title. SlidesCarnival.com Number four, The Piano Man. Had to come somewhere in the list. You knew it was going to happen. None of us are happy about it. 
It's number four, whatever. Uh, number three, the Uptown Girl. No, this guy freaking messed it up. Look at this. Went from number four to number two. Number three's in there, but it's not on a separate slide where it gets revealed as its own thing. Uptown Girl. That way, Crocodile Rock, which is a freaking Elton John song, which good writing, by the way. Braxton. Yeah, I get it. You you put a random Elton John song in with a list of euphemistic Billy Joel songs. Ooh, good job. And this is another gay list, another top 10 gay list thing. I thought we weren't doing gay jokes. And this is another top 10 list of sexual acts. You're making me look like a real schlub here, Braxton. You know what? We'll see how those contract negotiations go next week. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have some late night talks with my agent about options and everything else. Oh, don't you, don't you freaking know, Braxton, you don't look at me that way. Not when I know what I know about what you did. He uh, pooped in the tank part of the toilet. It's called an upper decker. Yeah, I know about the up, upper decker, Braxton. Now all these other white people know about it. Yeah, all of these white people. Ian. Ian knows about it. There's no way Ian isn't white. Yeah, because his name is Ian. Oh, God. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway. Braxton, if you didn't make such delicious beverages, you would be out of here today. Okay, we're ready for number one on a top ten list of Billy Joel songs. This list, I'm loving it, by the way. Hey, wait, Braxton. Braxton, wave to the people. This is Braxton, my head writer. He's uh, really, really outdone himself with this list hey let's give him a round of applause hey everyone everyone in the crowd here tonight everyone in the crowd if you're in this crowd here tonight just just give it up for braxton he's my head writer he writes all my jokes all of them yeah the ones that work the ones that don't braxton Anyway, thank you for giving him a round of applause. He's quite a guy, quite a guy. And single, gentlemen. Uh, uh, yeah, that's how you do a gay joke, Braxton. All right, uh, uh, number two, Crocodile Rock. Wait, that's not a Billy Joel song. That's an Elton John song. Ew. And number one, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is only a joke on myself because I have to try and read this. <laughs> the River of Dreams, which solid choice, by the way. Good job, me, who wrote this earlier. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Braxton, all these white people, figment, figment of my imagination. Probably not even real. Okay. Uh -huh. The River of Dreams. Wait, did I put the number one in the dark part of the page? Will I even be able to read it while dot, 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 having a good weekend? Yeah, I can read it. Eyesight's still what it's always been. What you think? I'm going to have a nice weekend and all of a sudden I'm not going to be able to read dark text on a dark background? Anyway, uh, BT Dubs. This is what I look like before weekend type fun. And this is me during weekend type fun. <laughs> I don't know why this is... Oh, by the way, this is me at Disneyland. This is my first trip to Disneyland. Um, I've gotten better headphones since then. <laughs> As if that's the thing that like... 
like, oh, this look like some little on-ear piece of crap. So what are those, made by Sony? Yeah, they are made by Sony. My daughter has them now, and she, like, trashes them. Uh, I have some much better over-ear headphones um, that are much, much nicer, much heavier, bigger drivers. Anyway, uh, I might have been smiling in this picture, not because of Disneyland. That place is trash. Anyway, uh, yeah, Disneyland. Not a fan, thank you very much. Um, yeah, me during weekend type fun. Uh, look, I swear to God, I told myself I wasn't going to do a billion gay jokes this time, but it immediately went there. Uh, it, that's immediately where it ended. Uh, 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 Braxton, write it so I can read it, Braxton. It's your job. No. No. Hey, that part where I said it was the, there were no white people and I wrote it all myself... I was kidding. There, there's a room full of white people, and Braxton is over here, and Kaysen, and Aiden. Oh my God! These people and Clarissa over there. Ugh. She gets around. Anyway, regardless, I'm telling you. Hold up. Look. Let's review how much of this is gay. I was just every gay slide. Um. Every gay one. Uh, okay, we're going to take very top. And no, this isn't that same stupid thing. Okay. Oh, God. There's so many slides. I'm so... Look, there's... It, I, I forgot about that one. I'm not even kidding. Okay. So, yeah, we can type fun. Ronsky faints. Da, 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 is it a sport? Freaking deserve it. Uh, sexual tension. Yeah, your underlings are male and you are male, therefore gay. Um, uh, that's a white man's hand slapping a slightly more pinkish white man. Uh, gay. Um, <laughs> that guy riding a pig. Gay. Uh, must. Uh, okay, that. Okay, hold up. We have. We were gonna count. We were gonna count. Okay, so, um, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's, f wait, uh, no, that one's not, that's five, that's six, that's seven, that one's definitely not juicy though. That's eight. That's nine. That's ten. Those are um, those are hetero uh, sexual practices. Um, That's 11. That's, well, it's LGBTQ. I did talk about homosexuality on this one. Uh, 12. Was I in 12? I can't remember. Um, oh, 13. 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23. So like, yeah, out of most of the slides, 24 slides, 23 of them have been gay ones, gay jokes. And I am an ally. I 100% support LGBTQ people. I do. That's not a joke. I'm not kidding around. I have a poster in my classroom that I made myself. I designed it. I printed it. I laminated it. Uh, no one pressured me into it. Uh, I asked if we could start up a GSA in my school um, with no input from anybody else. I just 
felt that it was something that we could benefit from. 100% not joking. I am an ally for real. My best friend is gay. Um, one or both of my children might be gay. <laughs> Actually, we do um, have information on that front, but it's not open for sharing because it's a child. So whatever. They, they have their own journey. They get to do what they want. Mm. <sighs> not my place anyway I but I did I was like when I went out and created this thing it was like let's not do a billion gay jokes but that's immediately where it went isn't it wait that's what's upsetting you not the gay stuff okay look this is to God this is what God looks like God is Emmylou Harris Emmy Lou Harris is God. Oh my. When I say, oh my God, I'm talking about Emmy Lou Harris. She has the voice of an angel. Look at how beautiful. Like, even with white hair as an older woman, like, she is a beautiful, beautiful woman. And she has one of the most beautiful voices in the history of music. She is. She's on my list of women, they're all tied for first place. Women with the most beautiful voices in music. They are Ella Fitzgerald, Aretha Franklin, and Emmy Lou Harris. Those are the three most beautiful voices in popular music. And I'm not even joking. And, and Emmy Lou Harris is on that freaking list. Therefore, she might be God. You can't tell me she's not God. Look at this. Okay, check this out. This is from Bible Hub. This is real. It's a real Christian Bible site for real Christians who love God. So I, I did a search. You can see the search bar here. This is a screenshot. This is a screenshot from Bible Hub. Um, I did a search. Uh, and it said, Your search for Emmy Lou Harris isn't God in our super accurate Bible database produced zero hit results. Please adjust your faith accordingly. So if you go to Bible Hub and you search Emmy Lou Harris isn't God and it comes back with nothing, doesn't that maybe tell you something about who God actually is and that God might be Emmy Lou Harris? Swear to God. And when I swear to God, I'm swearing to Emmy Lou Harris. Thank you. She's beautiful. She's talented. She is the greatest duet singer in the history of music. Look, Aretha Franklin sang duets with a lot of people. Most of them were terrible, especially her ones with George Michael. Um, Virgin Ella Fitzgerald sang amazing duets with Louis Armstrong. But Emmy Lou Harris, though. Okay. Oh, oh, I think this part, hold up, hold up. I'm getting excited. Watch this. I made it so it blinks on and off. Anyway, regardless, I'm, I'm much more excited about that than anyone. Also, doesn't the fact that I love Emmylou Harris as evidenced by the fact that I know all the lyrics to She... She had faith, she had belief in, she led, finish the phrase. Did you say all the people together and singing? Because if you didn't, then I know those lyrics and you don't. It is a beautiful, perfect, amazing duet that she sang with the late great Graham Parsons. It was on one of his solo albums recorded not that long before he died. He had finished his time with the Flying Burrito Brothers. He had recorded with the birds, and then they couldn't use those takes for stupid contract reasons. And uh, the birds went on and released songs that he helped them with, songs that he even recorded with them as a freaking member of the band. Um, and then they didn't get used. And Sweetheart of the Rodeo is an amazing album. And it like without Graham Parsons, that album doesn't exist. And Emmy Lou Harris was like Graham Parsons' muse. Like he but like she made his music happen. 
Anyway, if you don't know about Graham Parsons and you don't know about Emmy Lou Harris, I'm not even kidding. Like, first stop, she. Second stop, Boulder to Birmingham, which Emmy Lou Harris wrote about Graham Parsons after he died. Oh, it's a beautiful song. I love it. Anyway, moving on. Like, I really care about Emmy Lou Harris, and I love her, and I think she is great. And the fact that I know more about her than you do means that you are gayer than me. You are gayer than me. You're gayer than me, and I look like this. I know that I said that that other picture was the more recent one of me, but this one got posted on my Instagram today. Yep. The next update on my Instagram will be when I tell people that I created a SoundCloud and posted my new uh, hot hip-hop single, which is like six and a half minutes long. You know, you like them short singles, keep it short, sweet make something that the people can sing along to before they're done hearing it for the first time. Yeah, you know, popular music. Anyway. Hey, I know what you're thinking. Why do I have so many LGBTQ pride flags in my classroom? Because look, that's in my classroom. Is the plaque for best actor, best actress. Except for now, we just do two best whatever, best actor, actress, whoever, whichever gender non-qualified because like I've got trans kids I got gender fluid kids it doesn't matter I just say choose the two best choose the two best who do you think the two best uh people in this class are in terms of acting who gave it their all who did the best at it what do you think anyway um Yeah, and these are uh, the posters from the shows that we've done. We've done some shows. This one we didn't get to do. Anyway, so why do I have so many LGBTQ pride flags in my classroom? Uh, Oh my God, how do I keep doing this? How? Like week after week, this is some impressive S word. If I take two letters out of a swear, you will never be able to tell which one it were. Okay, this is what my debut single is going to look like. This is going to be my debut. Yeah, prepare yourself. Okay. Uh, I might be able to play it without even leaving the sanctity of um, where I am right now. Wo me lao chingy bon bon. What? Yeah. Hold up. I'd like to give a shout out. Hold up. Stop. What is making. What is that? I hit sound down and it's showing like some girl is she she's wearing clothes right i don't even have that's not even open in window that i have look these are my tabs these are my tabs like these are my tabs these are my tabs oh that's coming these are a list of billy joel songs these are my song lyrics for my rap song Um, This is the order of adjectives. This is the slides presentation that I made. Uh, That's where I got the theme. Uh, This is a new band, or they're reasonably new. They formed in 2016, and like, they're a jam band, and YouTube was like, you might like them, and they are. This is just a page where I haven't selected anything. And honestly, it makes me upset when people are like, hey, we'll use this as the thumbnail. And it's like, why are you showing me pole vaulter booty when, like, there's probably surprisingly little pole vaulting in the video? Like, I'd rather watch Winter Gatan make a clock escapement gate because I've been watching these since forever. Like... I watch a couple meme videos and suddenly 
freaking YouTube is like, you want to watch booties and boobies? And I'm like, uh, if I did, then I would definitely not do it here in the middle of me recording a video. Oh, there's Emmy Lou Harris. This is what she looks like now. This is what she looked like in the late 1960s, early 1970s. It's a beautiful woman, like really beautiful woman and beautiful, beautiful voice. Like you owe it to yourself to look up um, Boulder to Birmingham. Like I would play it, but then my, I would get content matched. Oh, that's for the Billy Joel. I was like the Down Easter Alexa. Is that a Billy Joel song? That's where I got my search bar. Uh, that's my iCloud. Oh, that's because... I made the uh, logo for Bible Hub. This is one time I was trying to... Oh, this is the sampulator where we make our tracks. Yeah. This that track I made. It's real smooth. Anyway, it is. I made it. Um, uh, it's tutorial on audacity stuff because I was having issues earlier. Yeah, I don't have that as an open freaking thing. And then when I go like volume change, it's like some girl flipping her hair and whatnot. And now all my viewers think that I watch girls flip their hair. Did I have that as an open tab? I think I think I've been hacked by Russians. Okay, let's play some video games. Wait, oh, some of the bench. Some of the bench. Swear to God, you stop laughing. This is pissing me off. The best nope ever. I would watch it if only, if only. Oh yeah, I was looking up Bug Fables because I wanted to see if it was that one game. And it is. It's that one that everybody's like, it's the best Paper Mario game ever. Anyway, let's go back. Let's forget about all this nonsense. Forget that it ever happened. This will be the first time I edit. And it'll be edited. Wait, hold up. Tell me, for the love of God, please tell me I'm recording. Okay. <laughs> I am. It would be very disappointing if I wasn't. All right, here's my new hit single, Parker State of Mind, uh, my my rap uh, identity is MC Mysterious Personage. Here we go. Wo me lao chengi bon bon. Yeah. I'd like to give a shout out to my Lord and Savior, Teenage Satan. Yeah, it's because of you these lyrics are still with me. Teenage Satan, this one's for you. Yeah, yeah. I owe Bubs, it's time. It's time, Bubs. I, Bubs, begin. Straight out of the smooth dungeons of rap. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling this one. This gonna be the take. This is gonna be the take. We're gonna upload it to SoundCloud. Yeah. Just you watch. Uh. Normally, do rappers go on this long with the year? Uh. Before they kick it into the verse? I don't know. This is my first time and I didn't rehearse. Uh. Yeah. The drifter drops deep. As does my part. I never lick, cause to lick is the significant other of art. Yeah. Beyond the walls of big bubbly jubbly booties in a row, life is defined. I think a big flappy slappy booty when I'm in a Parker state of mind. The heart got some smart, my art don't like no dirty chart. Run up to the part and get the start in that Parker state of mind. 
what more could you ask for the delicious drifter you complain about getting none i gotta love it though somebody still speaks for the snifter snifter drifter what are you some sort of grifter don't doubt the flow i don't doubt my flow Cause I'm rapping to the snake And I'm gonna move your lake You know that lake? You got a lake house up there I'ma lift it up high in the air And I'ma take it somewhere Where you never can find it You never gonna find it You dirty son of the bench You a portion of the bench That's right Not a big one either All right Married, irate, tainted like a bailer. Boy, I tell you, I thought you were a trailer. I can't take the getting none. I can't take the booty. I would have tried to wrench, but I guess I got no duty. No duty up in that booty. I'm rapping to the lake and I'm gonna move your snake. What? Last time it was the other way round. I ain't messing around, I'm telling you clowns, I looked at these lyrics, they're freaking ridiculous. The last one, I'm rapping to the snake and I'm gonna move your lake. This one, I'm gonna move the lake because I'm rapping to the snake. No, it's the other way around, lake with the snake. I'm rapping the lake and moving your snake. I hope that snake ain't in your trousers. Yowzers. Yeah. Years in a parker state of mind. When I was young, my significant other had an inhaler. I was kicked out without no scaler. I never thought that I would go to Baylor, and I didn't. I went to Arizona State. What? I ain't a soul alive that could take my significant other's trailer. Yeah. I'm like Eli Whitney with that cotton chin. He did something with it. I took this song, I did something with it. A lackluster aardvark is quite the card shark. Yeah, I threw card in there. They didn't have that part in there. Someone's gotta write these lyrics. The internet ain't no lyricist. My God. Thinking a big flappy slappy booty, yeah. Thinking of that big flappy, slappy, flappy, slappy, flappy, slappy booty. Girl, you got that booty, that flappy, slappy booty. And this mysterious personage is his own backup singer, yeah. Yeah, girl. I'm doing a talk out heard of the talk down that's in the middle i'm doing a talk out yeah i was my own backup singer in this song and also i had to write so many extra lyrics because the thing this friggin' generator spat out were not ve- it was not very good Look, girl i know you the kind of extremely extremely inebriated girl who still might go home with a man even though his rap song was not that good so let's do that. All right, I'm out. Okay. That was my debut. My my rapping type debut. And look, if the case you doubt that those were the actual lyrics, look. This is the song lyrics generator, and it gave me the big, jubbly, wubbly booties in a row. That's the way life is defined. And look at this. I'm not even joking. I rap it to the snake. I'm going to move your lake. And then later, I'm rapping to the lake. I'm going to move your snake. I didn't put lake and snake in there twice. It was just like, give me some random nouns. And I was like, lake, 
Actually, no, I put snake in there. They put lake in there. So like, uh, oh, what? No noun rhymes found for cotton gin using Baylor instead. And then I brought up the cotton gin later because somebody's got to do it. Like, God, I'm a much better lyricist than this random lyrics generator. You hear this fire that I was spitting? Oh, my God. Anyway, back to the infinite regression. Hey, people, thank you for another weekend of weekend type fun. I bet I'm going to go to my freaking uh, the, the videos folder. The folder of my videos. Bible Hub, that's ridiculous. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, and it's like all of the final scores that I've given video games. And then reference the letters of recommendation that I've given to students who are going to Ivy League universities. <sighs> She's the freaking worst. <laughs> you tell her I said it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's a delightful student. You know that. She, anyway, I have a cat licking my shin. I was talking about cat tickle shins before. This cat straight up licked my shin like it was a kitty cat lollipop. That's how the song goes, right? Kitty cat, kitty cat, kitty cat, lollipop. Okay, stop. For the love of God, it is time to end the video. Okay, bye.